Simply put, we are facing a climate emergency. It's not a hoax, it's here to stay, and it's only going to get worse. Climate change is the fundamental design problem of our time. It is a multifaceted problem, super complex, and I promise you it will affect every single aspect of living. I'm sure you could have guessed architecture plays a huge, huge role here. So today we are going to be talking about architecture and climate change. For architects and urban planners and designers, we have to be aware of climate change. I wanted to give you some fast facts. Architects and urban designers now have to be retrained too to be aware of these really intense problems. Now I'm sure you're aware, but because CO2, when it is released in our atmosphere, it becomes trapped and therefore as a result increases the overall global temperatures and according to the intergovernmental panel on climate change buildings and the world of architecture and construction are profoundly responsible now statistically speaking 36 percent of global energy expended is by buildings alone 22 of this is from residential buildings eight is from non-residential six percent of global energy expended is from the construction industry alone. Also note that uh, materials will play a critical role here. Manufacturing cement, pouring it, and using it as a primary construction material, at least in the United States, is responsible for 8% of CO2 emissions of the construction sector. So like I mentioned, I want to discuss the significant facts and figures. Going forward, it will be the architect's responsibility, along with the construction industry's responsibility for really cutting these numbers back. Let's start off this video with all of the facts. I will be listing all of my sources down below. Please go review everything else. But before we get into the statistics, I do want to make a quick side note here. We are seeing the largest wave of urban growth in our human history. More than half of our human population today resides in a cityscape and in urban areas. But by 2060, it is estimated that two thirds of the population, which is expected to be 10 billion people, will be residing in these cities. Therefore, to accommodate for this influx of people and more bodies to house, we will need to be increasing the overall floor area across our major landscapes and cities, and this floor area will have to be doubled. We are expected to add 2.48 trillion square feet of livable area to really accommodate for our population. According to architecture2030.org, this is the equivalent of building building the equivalent of a New York City every single month for the next 40 years. <laughs> this is why this video is important because I feel like all of these buildings should be built with a zero net carbon standard. All right, now on to the facts and some of them are actually a little scary and concerning. So in 2015, 82% of global energy consumption in our built environment was supplied by burning fossil fuels. In 2018, only 17% of buildings consumed renewable energy. 33% of global energy-related greenhouse gas emissions is from buildings, which makes this the largest greenhouse gas emitting sector. Specifically, in the United States, buildings consume 40% of the energy and emit almost half of the CO2 emissions through greenfield development, cement production, and burning fossil fuels. Even though cities only occupy three percent of Earth's land, they are responsible for 70% of building emissions. Generally speaking, 2030 is a major, major deadline for buildings. So several architects, architecture firms, designers signed a promise, an agreement saying that by 2030, they will lower the energy per square meter in buildings around the world by 30%. This is the target outlined in the Paris Agreement. Flooding. <laughs> Let's talk about flooding. Flooding is something that architects and designers and engineers have to design buildings to withstand and hold up against major flooding and also other natural disasters. Now flooding is a climate related issue due to rising sea levels and temperatures. Annually there is 40 billion dollars in damages caused by flooding worldwide. In Venice alone they have experienced extreme flooding up to 85% of its area including 
including the St. Mark's Basilica. Now construction. Obviously, if you're sitting at home and you're designing stuff on Revit, it doesn't seem that drastic or tragic. We really get into issues when we start actualizing buildings that the architects themselves designed. Naturally, in every building, there is gonna be a client involved and they are going to want to use the cheapest and most readily available materials. Not to generalize, but I'm sure clients were really looking to cut costs here and cement, steel, all these very high green gas emitting materials when it comes to production are going to be the cheapest materials to use. So when constructing a new building, 55% of the total energy expended is actually devoted to extracting materials and products. 20% of the total energy expended is used in the actual construction phase and 10% is in the transportation phase. If cement was a country, it would actually be the third largest emitter behind China and the United States. 2.2 billion tons of CO2 is produced by cement production each year. To honor the Paris Agreement, cement usage and production must fall by 16%. Since 1950, cement production has increased 30-fold. Energy savings, so incorporating smart technologies can really help out your building reduce its energy loads. Now, if they were incorporated into every existing building now, we could decrease energy consumption by 10%. Here is what you as an architect can do. In 2050, American Institute of Architects hope to achieve a net zero emissions from the US building sector. Over 600 firms have signed up to the AIA 2030 commitment, pledging energy efficiency in their designs. Firms and architects must also focus on retrofitting existing buildings. Carl Elefante once said, the greenest building is the one that is already built. Demolishing old and building new is costly and greatly contributes to the carbon footprint. Instead, do some upgrades to existing older buildings. Next thing architects can do is be extremely material conscious. Concrete, as we discussed, is a big carbon footprint contributor, but also so is manufacturing steel. The embodied carbon represents the carbon emissions associated with making building products and construction, from raw material extraction to manufacturing, transportation, and end-of-life disposal. Materials like concrete, steel, insulation, gypsum board all have high embodied carbon rates and the simplest way to slash embodied carbon expenditures is to revisit and retrofit older existing buildings also picking a carbon smart material like bamboo or wood lastly architects and designers can pursue their designs with a more green lens meaning that they can incorporate renewables into their buildings consider green energy contracts and try to bring buildings to a zero net energy building and if you don't know what a zero net energy building is to combine energy efficiency and renewable energy generation to consume only as much energy as can be produced on site through renewable resources over a specified period of time now overall around the globe we are seeing very drastic weather changes and conditions higher temperatures are contributing to extreme heat waves we're in the middle of one right now droughts rising sea levels, intense storms, wildfires, floods, and more. By the end of the century, we could be facing a devastating hurricane on a bi-weekly basis. We could face a decade-long drought in areas like Arizona. Cities like Miami could be abandoned and left underwater. The vast migration toward higher ground will cause unrest. Long story short, we could be screwed. We really could. And I find myself incredibly frustrated considering that the top 100 companies around the globe could solve the climate crisis in no time just by snapping their fingers basically and they refuse to because of money and financial reasons. I digress. Architecture will still play a huge role here. If I missed a statistic please let me know and also include your sources down below. The purpose of this video is just to spread some knowledge. I'm not trying to bash any architect out there or anything like that just trying to spread some good information to know and hopefully we can make our buildings greener and have a lasting positive impact on future generations. All right, well, that is it for today's video and I hope to see you guys next time. Love you guys.